Hello everyone, before going into today's video, I want you to know that I released on Mobile Fire a massive Talia guide with over 30 pages of content, over 40 matchups and over 30 synergies with information on runes, builds, win conditions, roaming, gang pets and much much more. You have the link in the description below and feel free to check it out whenever you need help and uh, leave an upvote if it did help you. I will also answer all the questions you have guys in the comments or on Discord or wherever you want and I'll also be there for you if you need me. Thank you very much and let's go to the video. So here we are in game for today's video. I want to actually do a level by level Talia guide. Now as you can notice from our team comps, whoops, wait. As you notice from our team comps, uh, they have an extremely late game oriented comp with Cassidy that scales up very good, with Riven that will stomp eventually if it's good. Now, we have Udyr and Talia. These champions are very very early oriented champions and late game they are kind of weak or bad. So what I want to do today is, uh, before going into the game, uh, and before starting the level by level tutorial, I want to tell you that I actually picked Talia into Cassidine, which I normally wouldn't, but I really wanted to actually do a video on it. And as you will see from this spoiler, <laughs> I actually did it very well. And they are even duo, their jungler and their mid laner. And so it should have been difficult, but we still actually made it and we won. Now, before we go into the game, I want you to analyze a bit when you are in champ select, okay, that's the first thing of the level by level tutorial. The first level, it's before the game, it's the level zero, it's before the game even started. Now, if you pick Talia into this, you have to understand, you have to always know your two versus two. Now, there is an Odir and Talia versus Cassidy on Olaf. Most of the time, if the players are decent and same skill, the Talia and Udir should have pressure and should win early. Most of the time, they should. Now, uh, knowing that I actually did uh, pick Talia and went for the 2 versus 2 trades and we actually won because of that. So take some notes before uh, picking Talia and see if you have a strong 2 versus 2 and fight if you do or do not fight if you have a bad 2 versus 2 like if you're into I don't know some early champion that deals a lot of damage or Zoe, Ahri, some CC, some hard CC that can kill you. I don't even know how what examples to give right now because I have to think of it too much and I, I want to jump in the video. So, level by level tutorial. Now, first level obviously you'd want to actually uh, pick your items, go to mid lane. Now, I'm gonna do literally level by level today. So from level 1 to 2 to 3 to 5 to 6 to 7 to till I finish the game. Now, in the first level you're interested in staying usually here if you don't invade because because from here you can see whoever is coming here and who's invading. So just stay here and wait and you see them in the back off if they invade. Or you can stay around here but that's that's your bot lane job. Now uh, at level 1 you don't have much to do. You're going to see what I did on lane. In this particular matchup you can try to poke him. We invaded here. It didn't go well. I mean there were a few universes in which, universes in which that uh, went well. Now. In the few first levels, in the first level especially against the Cassidy, against most melee champions, you'd want either to push them into the tower if you know you have the jungle PO and your jungler plays around you, or if you're afraid you can also play safe but I, and just try to poke with autos. Uh, but I would rather choose the first one with the corollary that I'm going to try to be defensive against that uh, Olaf. Now, as you know, uh, if uh, you extend, you're going to get caught. Now, at level 2, you're going to level up your E. And I'm gonna... Right? And you're still going to farm perfectly. This is your job first levels. Mostly three things, maybe. Farming perfectly, as perfect as you can. So level 1 to 6, that's what you have to do. Escaping ganks, or not dying to ganks, or living, or warding properly. Maybe ward even their rights at level 1 if you want to, if you feel to. That's uh, at around 1 minute and 20 seconds, that would help you greatly. Now we're going to see here an early uh, ignite, a very bad ignite by me because I thought I could hit W. If I would have uh, hit W there, I would have killed the, uh, maybe the Kassadin. Now understand that he plays with teleport and also understand here that I actually baited him to flash. I did not know exactly how much damage I uh, 
can take but apparently he backed off right before the last auto and that will cost him further down the road now as you can see here he no longer has his flash as a Cassadin if he has no flash he's basically useless to level 6 and you're going to see how I take advantage of that now here maybe it's his misplay maybe some guys would miscalculate because why because I used at the same time corrupting and the biscuit giving me enough HP to actually survive his burst now if I would have died that would have been extremely bad but given the context I didn't so let's move on with the game level 3 I skipped it you level up your W you try to do a combo or you try to escape a gank with the W. Now, uh, usually at around level 3 to 4 to 5, you're going to have some junglers that want to come to your mid lane. So at level 3 or 4 and so, uh, I'm gonna do these levels together. You're interested in farming again, in uh, poking down the enemy mid lane as much as you can, and in calling your jungler for ganks if it's needed. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna see here that Kassadin didn't back off here and he kinda realized that he has no chance in going that way so I'm just gonna do this, I'm gonna hit him uh, basically we get the kill here now Olaf has no flash because of his previous gang bot lane so we're winning this one too, I just try to stay away from him so that I uh, do not die randomly and now I'm level 4 with 2 kills uh, a lot of advantage actually uh, I'm going to push really fast now against teleport users you want every time to push this into their tower uh, I'm gonna recall here okay as you can see I started directly at level 5 with a lost chapter which is a great item now I'm not full HP yet but it doesn't really matter uh, that lost chapter will prove extremely useful because it will give you mana to, uh, around from level 5 to 8 maybe it being the worst case you should complete lost chapter you don't buy too many of I don't know too many vision wars too many potions too many Doran rings because it will actually push back your item now at level 5 I have three points in Q one point in uh, seismic shove and one point in wearable art now I also discuss about spells more in depth on my guides so yeah uh, here I actually did my first misplay of and only misplay of the game uh, Probably not really only misplay of the game the, my, the, my, only, my only misplay of the game will come soon when I'll die to that Olaf Because as you can you will see that this Olaf actually goes something like this And will come exactly I can't even believe this Jesus He really did that didn't he? I mean I think he wanted brights but yeah, this will be my first mistake and the only mistake that I did the whole game. Now, I misplaced myself oddly. I don't know. This is another mistake that I did and it's stupid. Not casting the wall, but going slightly towards mid lane. And even though, even though normally he should have recalled. And I should have stood in this zone. That's This is the main mistake a lot of Celia players do now. At level 4, 5, 6 word aside and stick to it but word it smartly and don't do the mistake what I did here to that I went a bit into this direction if I if I wouldn't go here I would have had a perfect game because I don't die again in this game now as you can see here uh, Odir came and Odir played really well here because he got at least a kill uh, and honestly it's not even a problem that big that Cassidy got the kill but if you're not careful in a game like this, they're going to scale. Now, Garen won 1 versus 1. And now I'm level 6. Usually when you're level 6, you're interested. You're interested in roaming, but I do not have any voice left. Now, I see here that uh, Udyr went bot, and I know I have no ult. Okay? So I use my ult in melee range. You should too. That's another trip, uh, tip or trick that you should play with. You're interested after level 6 to gang bot at 6 or after level 6 and usually you're interested in shoving the wave back into their tower. See? He comes to mid, he has to push and then you move bot. Now what I do here, it's exactly that. I move bot and I try to engage on them. There we go, a perfect uh, W onto Kaiza. On 
to Xaya, sorry, but it didn't matter because my uh, Kaiza got killed in the process. But again, I got another kill, so that was fine. Here, it's a 2 versus 3, a starting 2 versus 3. They are doing great, they get slightly poked down. And as you can see here, I tend to do some pretty good W sometimes. And this actually gave us uh, free drakes and a small heart attack because of this tornado. You see that? that Close that was, I think it would have stolen the Drake. How much damage that deals? Nah, no chance. No chance. Anyway, now I'm 4 1, I'm level 7, I did a gang bot. Even though my ADC died, I actually got the kill on their ADC. Which kinda is the point of roaming. I mean, even though their ADC uh, ro uh, died, even though our ADC died, I actually pushed the wave closely to their tower if I recall correctly and uh, she lost some CS she actually uh, lost maybe didn't necessarily lose advantage this case but it's a good risk to take now normally Kaiser shouldn't have died normally but yeah this was the case so it's okay uh, you should do these robes and try not to get really sick killed that's the bottom line that's the bottom line now here is minute 8 and I already have my Ludens and normally Games like that would transition into a lose if you don't get uh, this kind of items and this kind of power pike spikes early on because Cassidy outscales you massively, same with Riven and Xayah late game is actually quite strong as well uh, not necessarily in Tower Team Combat in general Now, level 8, finished Ludens, spotted Janna gave a free kill, well I didn't give the kill because I actually took it uh, I just realized that I uh, hated myself for taking it because normally when you're ahead you should also pass some kills to your ADC but there's a big but Pun intended. if you are good enough not to die with a huge huge uh, how can I say shutdown gold on you then it's fine I mean I actually reached 10 8 or 9 or 10 kills and didn't I, I won't die again and I have a huge bounty on top of my head now normally if Kaiza would have got the bounty and died that would have been a bad trade but she scales to the towards the late game much better than I do so it's a good thing to actually give her kills uh, level 7, 8, 9 you're interested in finishing Ludens or trying to finish it normally you wouldn't finish it at level 8 or 9 as I did again roam as much bot as you can I push the lane as you can see my farm is even better than Kastin's and I try to go here and fix the situation as much as I can. Now, I, I'm i not out of vision there. I don't understand what Olaf is doing, but... Uh, Janna, I think Janna knew I'm here and still somehow died. Following up, uh, Kassadin will flash here on Kaiza. Yep. And he will get the kill. But it doesn't matter because I'm so far ahead now. I will actually kill everyone without a problem. And more so, Udir will also get the kill. Now, me and Udir will play perfectly this game. We'll both play like this and will not die. And I don't even know who he is. And they are actually, their mid and jungler are duo, so I would have expected them to play better. Probably they got blamed for the loss, honestly. But normally. In mid to late game, this would have been a lose for us. In most scenarios, with good players or standard players or same elo players, same skill players, mid to late game, this would have been a lose. But because we played so aggressive early, we actually uh, achieved what we actually wanted to do. Now here, I even follow here. I even follow here with the flashing knight. Getting the kill on Cassidy. And I think. I don't understand that flash. I Yeah, he got the kill too. Now, even without mana, I actually went there and helped my Udir with the risk of maybe dying. I had flash, there was no risk of dying, honestly. So, you have to. Even you have no mana like this, in cases like this, you have to try to help him, especially if he has a ton of shutdown gold on top of his head. Okay, so. Recap, recap, back that off. Finish Ludens, finish Boots around level 8 to 12, 13 maybe. Try to finish that Ludens as early as you can. Uh, 
max spells Q, E, W, uh, maybe get a stopwatch uh, because if you have a huge, huge shutdown gold on top of your head, you're going to need a stopwatch. Uh, roam as much as you can, try to get a full W EQ combo or try to engage with your ult if you do have the stopwatch or if you don't, try to engage with your ult without actually jumping in the middle of their team, that would have been, that would be a pretty good thing to do. Now, I'm gonna go a little faster here, uh, because from now on I think we just roll them over, but you're going to see that we have a very good macro game in general for this uh, particular game. Uh, why? Because I don't even know how to tell you, I rarely have games this good in terms of macro. We're going to see that we actually go after towers, after as many towers as we can, we rotate, we rotate a lot. Here we try to make another play, uh, it doesn't matter, I just ping Udir to go and pop that herald, which he will, as you can see here. We're just trying to uh, make that advantage larger as much as we can because we will eventually lose. We all know that. We know that mid to late game we're going to lose. Now, I actually ulted here, went far too deep, but I had time to actually cast a W and an E and a Q. And Jana just pushed me away because she was panicked enough. Now. This maybe didn't net us any kills because they had some escapes or flashes or alts, but it gave us gold from the fact that Herald did uh, his damage and we also got plates. And as you'll see here, our bot lane overextends, but in the meanwhile, yeah, this Riven Teleport is a good one. In the meanwhile, Udyr will take mid lane, Garon will take top lane, so we win on the macro game, regardless of what's happening here. <coughs> now, if Lulu gets caught here, yeah, no, she does not. It's good, it's a good play, regardless. I go bot here, I try to defend, I actually go for uh, Oblivion Orb and then move towards Zonias and Sorg Shoes. Now, I'm level 11, I have my second grade ult. Now, when you have level 11, you can cast a longer ult, you can Basically your range increases on ult a bit and a bit every time you level it up. So you can actually do more plays and better plays catching people that are far away or doing vaults engages like I just did here. I did it here because I knew I was strong enough to actually do it without getting one shot. There was no one to one shot me in their team but against some other CC, maybe a poppy that stuns you or a vein that stuns you into a wall that would have been maybe a bad engage. Now I'm level 11, I ping my team like mad that I'm on the other side of the map. Fairly important to do that at every level. This is a level by level tutorial but you have to do that at every goddamn level. Sorry for the expression. Okay, I try to set up a vision word here so that we can do some plays. I see Cassidy. Uh, I did not have a sweeping lens here, Oracle. But I mm, kept the fact that I have a vision ward, so I didn't care much about my surroundings. It's very hard for them to corner you because this direction is the only one available. Now, Riven comes here. I don't know why Kaisa didn't help me here with uh, with the red buff because it was for her mostly. But as you'll see from here, we just scale it off and win it by a large margin and by a perfect macro game honestly so we actually move around here uh, we try to get this tower there is some fighting going on the garen flash i did not understood i did not understood very much i ignited here for no reason because he would have still died she would have still died and now we just uh, we just do another ult i repeated what i did before you can see here how they are. You can see here that this is like the fourth or fifth time I've hit Janna with that W. So I got a free kill on that. She should have died too. Uh, let me target myself. Oops. Okay. Now I'm level 12. Just level 12. Uh, I'm very far ahead so this is not the ordinary game. But you should know what you have to do in general if it's a close out game. If you're behind, you have to try to farm and get some farm back up. We got a kill there, another kill. You can see I play with the vision. I actually use the red trinket myself there. Uh, because when you're ahead, it's a good thing to have the red trinket to actually cut vision from the enemy team. 
that's a good thing to do in general, but if uh, you're behind, you're more interested maybe in putting some words to corner someone and one-shot someone. Now, after level 9, 9, 10 and 11 and so, you're interested in doing full WQ combos more and more and maybe get one-shots on people like that, Janna, as I just did. Casting your old Bonesy is sometimes risky if you don't have a stopwatch. I kinda say that you shouldn't do it that often, but you should do it as much as you're comfortable with it. And you should, if you have success with it, do it way more often. Now, when you have Zonia, you can play by another set of rules uh, because now you can stopwatch instantly after you cast your ult into that engage. But remember, if you cast your ult and you miss your W on that target or on some targets, you're just going to die. Or you're just going to miss your major combos, your major tools, you're not going to have any damage after that if you miss your W EQ combo after an ultimate. So keep that in mind too. Still level 12, now we're interested in getting barons and drakes. We have two mountain drakes and the third one will come soon. And we're interested in taking tower. Now Garen will get caught once or twice, doesn't matter. Because we actually get a tower or a kill every single time uh, something happens on the other side of the map. I actually ping them aggressively for this to happen. I actually ping them consistently and aggressively for this to happen. They're going to get caught here. Uh, Lolo should have just backed off here. I don't know why he still stood there. But honestly, it didn't matter much. Now, this was the thing that I was a bit afraid of. See, Kaiza still died. Lolo still died if they had. Huge advantages on them. Now, that Kassadin or that Zaya or that Riven would start to be to be annoying will start to deal damage and if they play right they actually might come around you have to be always be careful to be careful to that thing because in the mid to late game with Tulia you know that you're not as strong unless you're like 10-1 as I am I pressed F12 this side I wanted to press minus there sorry minus okay so I noticed uh, because of this word there's Xayah and I didn't notice that she wants to fight me for some reason and even though she healed Well, I had ignite on her. I had flash. I could have flashed. I don't understand this kind of place She had ult also, but ult would have been pointless mostly because I just wheeled her down with the Q and E not even a W not even hit W and so Moving faster now, we're interested in uh, getting that inhibitors down, getting that Baron down, and when they come on Garen, you'll see that we're that's not wrong. We'll see that we are instantly starting Baron. I'm actually instantly starting Baron. I actually kind of dictated the pace of this game, even though it's not that hard to do. I think that's hard to do in diamonds and so. Now, as I said, this was a ranked game, but normally people should know these things in that division in diamond and now we're closing by towards the end of the game we're level 13 only but I can tell you in general what to do for level 16 is mainly the things that uh, you did in the past two in the past levels now mid and late game are quite similar for Talia it's just that you drop in value and then rather to close to the late game late late game like minute 40 plus you start to have again value because of your consistent damage and of your WQ combo displacement but in the mid to late game in that scenario in that array of time you're not going to be that strong but you still have to do the same thing maybe clear some words maybe play around vision maybe do a WQ combo maybe do these things try to get the kill on someone try to keep the farm up try to engage with your ult if you can try to corner objectives barons and such i have a huge section on the guide if you're interested by the way on mid late and early game phases on roaming on ganking and tips and tricks and stuff like that most of this stuff i actually discussed it here before and i actually keep discussing it them into this video here i don't really understand now as you can see here the power difference she's only one level behind me and she has flash and ult, but it's not she doesn't have any damage to actually uh, you know, this was a bit of a disrespect from her towards me because I had flash up had zone up I was in the middle of minions that were buffed by Baron now I think she's just certain but that's something you should generally do level 15 as you can see here I just killed Riven so I didn't AFK what did I do I casted ult towards the mid lane 
I actually caught their strongest champion, arguably, because it's mid to late game now, and Kasni should be the strongest. And from this point, we just end the game. This is it for today, guys. This is the video. Uh, this is the tutorial, and I really hope it helps. I tried to do my thought process to talk about to talk about my thought process at every second of the game, and there's no possibility of me making a better level by level tutorial than this uh, because I just said everything that needs to be said about it and if you want to further improve and if you want a written guide you again have the one on mobile fire that's basically what I preach and what I talk about and what I try to teach others in these kind of videos in text form so I strongly suggest to look up on it if you want to learn more because it's a massive resource and I wrote it for you guys so <laughs> try to try to look over it if you can uh, but yeah so that's about it for right now for today I really hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time guys I'm Drumat and I really hope you have a nice day